Hello everyone. So continuing with the discussion on the methods to uh, design the traffic signal timing. Uh, the next method that we are going to discuss is the Webster's method. Okay. So before that we had uh, covered the trial cycling method. Then we had done the approximation method. And the next method that we are going to do is the Webster's method. All right. So in the trial cycling method, we have uh, seen that uh, basically we assume the uh, traffic signal timing, the signal timing, and uh, then we see based upon the uh, the traffic volume if that traffic signal timing is appropriate or not. Right. In approximation method, we have uh, seen that pedestrians are included and uh, the traffic signal timing is decided taking into consideration the time required by the pedestrian to cross the road as well as the time required by the vehicles to cross the road or cross the intersection right now in the webster's method uh, what we do is we take into consideration the normal flow value and the saturated flow value Right, so we have the intersection and in uh, that road intersection the road must be having some width right so the the actual condition the normal flow value and the maximum capacity of the road is considered and based upon that taking the ratio of that we find out the total signal time all right so uh, this factors method take into account the normal flow value and the saturated flow value of the different roads to design the signal timing all right so this normal uh, flow value or the running traffic volume or the actual traffic volume for different roads uh, we will identify them as qa and QB right so QA and QB is the normal flow value then we have the saturated flow value now the saturated flow value uh, there is a table uh, that is available so depending upon the width of the road what could be the saturated traffic flow value for that road is given right so suppose we have the road as 3 meter right if the width of the road is 3 meter then the saturated traffic flow value will be 1850 right so this goes till 5.5 meter width of the road and if the available width of the road is greater than 5.5 meter then we calculate the traffic volume of such roads by taking 525 vehicles per hour per meter width of the road all right and uh, through that we find out the total traffic volume or the total saturated traffic volume of the road right so these uh, saturated uh, traffic flow we will represent it as a and sb right so uh, moving to the design step so, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to find out the ratio of the normal flow value and the saturated traffic flow value right so your ya and yb are the ratios of the normal flow value and the saturated flow value right for the respective roads right and then we will have a parameter y which will be equal to the ratio which will be equal to sum of the ratio of the natural flow value and the uh, saturated flow value right so we have y a and y b which is the ratio of normal flow value and saturated flow value and we have capital y which is sum of y a and y b right after this we are going to find out the total loss time which will be found using the expression l equal to 2 n plus r right n is the number of phase for which we are going to design the signal time right and r is the all red time which in this case is taken as 16 seconds if not specified 
right if not specified we will take uh, all the time as 16 second right generally uh, for this method the red time is taken as 16 second okay and then we uh, find out the optimum cycle time and optimum cycle time denoted by c not is found using the formula 1.5 l plus 5 divided by 1 minus capital y it's a very important formula for your gate as well as other competitive exams uh, in objectives okay because sometimes uh, directly formula based question comes okay so the question may come that uh, you have to design uh, like the uh, normal flow and saturated flow values are, are given and uh, the phase is taken as uh, at the two phase or four phase and then you have to find out the optimum cycle time right many times it is asked in the gate and uh, in other competitive exam also right so it's a very important formula you should know okay now uh, once you find out the optimum cycle time based upon the uh, total loss time by the vehicles uh, and taking into account the ratio of the normal traffic flow and saturated traffic flow we find out the green time required again this this formula is very important for gate as well as the competitive exams okay so your ga and gb are the green times for the respective roads where the formula for finding out the green time for road a will be y a by y and bracket c not minus l right so c not is the optimum cycle time that we have found in this step number 3 l is the uh, total loss time that we have found in this step number 2 y a by y we have already found in this step number 1 right so like this we have to find out the green time required for each of the road all right so it's a very short and concise uh, method okay and uh, is used to design the traffic based upon the normal flow conditions and the saturated traffic flow conditions okay so let's do a question to see understand these steps to design the signal timing using vectors method right so we have uh, two roads road a and road b uh, the parameters of the roads are given right so we have width of the road uh, for road a the width of the road is 15 meters all dimensions are in meters right so width of the road a is 15 and for b is 8 meter and number of uh, the normal flow in one direction is 465 vehicles per hour per lane and for other is 350 vehicles per hour per lane on the same road the vehicles in the opposite direction is 420 vehicles per hour per lane and for road b it is 260 vehicles per hour per lane right so here you will observe that all that time we have already been given right the all that time that is given to us as 15 seconds right so if not given we will automatically take it as 16 second Wait, but if it is given, we'll take it as 15 seconds. All right. So uh, conventionally, what happens is uh, like the IRC method of design uh, is a combination of approximation method and Webster's method, right? So, uh, so that's why uh, we get red time from uh, the approximation method that we use to check uh, in the Webster's method, right? So in that case, we basically uh, get the red time. All right. But if we directly suppose in an intersection we move to the we, uh, we want to design using webster's method then at that time uh, conventionally uh, the red time is adopted as 16 seconds okay so we will use uh, webster's method to design the two phase traffic signal all right so again uh, either i hope you have the pdf open with you all right Uh, in which these steps are written, or uh, you must have noted down, right? and uh, we should uh, solve it together, right? Then make it. Okay. So, if we look into the first step of the Webster's method, the first step is to find out the ratio between the normal flow and the saturated flow. 
right so the step one the step one is to find out the y a and y b and from there we have to find out the capital y which is equal to the ratio is sum of y a and y b yes so y uh, a and y b are the ratio of normal flow to the saturated flow so for that the normal flow let's uh, draw the diagram first for the intersection so from the diagram normally things get much clear okay so uh, we have uh, two roads right so let's say this is road b and this is road a right and the width of the road is a is 15 meter and width of the road b is 8 meter okay and number of lanes in road a is 4 so we have right and since we have already seen that the vehicles will be coming from uh, different uh, opposite directions so we are going to have the divider in between all right like this okay so vehicles uh, in road a in one direction we have uh, 465 vehicles per hour per lane right so from yeah, it's four lane so we have 465 vehicles in both direction uh, in both lanes and uh, in the opposite we have 420 vehicles coming from the opposite direction right we have 420 vehicles that are coming from the opposite direction in similar fashion uh, in road b we have 350 vehicles per hour per lane right we have two lanes so we have from here we have the 350 vehicles per hour per lane and from the opposite direction we have 260 vehicles per hour per lane okay so uh, traffic volume is taken uh, and vehicles per hour per lane so the normal flow that is QA uh, QA if you see uh, just like we have done previously we will take maximum value right so we have 465 as our maximum value so QA is 465 vehicle per hour per lane QB normal flow for the road B highest is 350 right so we will take 350 vehicles per hour per lane okay then comes the saturated flow right so saturated flow for road A right now uh, here the width of the road that we are going to take is 4 meter right because this is moving in 4 meter right and likewise the width of the road that we are going to take is 7.5 meter for road A because sorry uh, yeah uh, 7.5 meter because the uh, vehicles are traveling on uh, 7.5 meters okay now for 4 meter let's put the saturation value for B first for 4 meter we have the saturated value table already given to us right so here we have the value that is given to us as 1950 right so we are going to take it as 1950 vehicle per hour per lane right 
for a you see the width of the road is 7.5 meters all right so in that case if the width of the road is greater than 5.5 we have 525 vehicles per hour per meter width of the road right so here what we are going to do we are simply going to multiply it with 525 so we are going to multiply this 525 into 7.5 all right so by uh, doing that we are going to have the vehicles as 3937.5 vehicles per hour right so this is the by uh, traffic saturated traffic volume for uh, for the uh, uh, road a right but we take traffic as vehicles per hour per lane right because you see here it is given per meter width of the road right so for 7.5 meter width of the road we have this value right but we want in vehicles per hour per lane so here we have two lanes right so we have two lanes so for per lane what we are going to do we are going to divide by 2 3937.5 divided by 2 right so we'll convert it to 1969 vehicle per hour per lane okay so like this we are going to have the uh, saturated traffic volume Parle for road A, okay. Simple, but should be very careful because when we have too much, too many numericals to cover in a very short time period, then this kind of mistakes happens. Okay, so be careful about these, right? You have to find out, take up the values as vehicles per hour per day. Okay, right. So we have uh, now. normal flows and saturated flows right so we can find out the ratio which is y y a is 465 divided by 1969 so it will be 465 divided by 1969 right so it will be 0.236 okay and y b y b is uh for qb that is 350 350 divided by sb saturated flow that is 1950 that will be 1950 okay so this will be 0.18 right so capital y will be 0.236 plus 0.18 so that will be 0.416 okay so this completes our step 1 you see in step 1 we have we have to find out the capital y and we have find out the capital y now the next step is to find out the total loss time which is equals to uh, 2n plus r right so we are designing two phase uh, system so here n will be to the red, red time we have already given so we are going to take it as 15 right so step number 2 step 2 step 2 will be to find out the total loss time which is equals to 2n plus r okay so n is the number of phases of signal time which is 2 in this case and uh, red light time we are given 15 so putting the values and we'll get the total loss time in second okay then we have step 3 and step 3 is to find out the optimum cycle time to find out the optimum cycle time okay so the formula for optimum cycle time is 1.5 l plus 5 divided by 1 minus 
Why let me check? Yeah. Okay. Again, uh, do remember these two formulas. It's very important. Okay. So uh, putting the values. So C naught will be equals to 1.5 into L. We have already calculated the value of L in step number two. So we are going to put it L 19. Plus five divided by one minus y. Y we have calculated in step number one, which is zero point four one six. So it is zero point four one six. Okay. So on solving it, the value will come out as fifty seven point three six, which is equal to fifty eight seconds. All right. So we have found out the optimum cycle time. As 58 seconds. So now we have to find out the green time, right? We have to find out the green time for the respective routes. So the green time, the green time, green time for road A will be y a by Capital Y into C naught minus L. Okay, we have already find out the values, right? So value of of Y A was zero point two three six. Zero point two three six. Value of capital Y was zero point four one six into Fifty-eight minus the loss time, which was nineteen uh, seconds. Okay. On solving it, the value will come out to be twenty-two point one two five, which will take as twenty-three seconds. Okay, just solve it uh, as I move along. Okay, make sure all the values that I am writing here. Are correct, but right? if I'm writing any wrong solution, do let me know. Okay, y b by y c not minus l. Okay, y b we have calculated in step number one, which is zero point one eight. Right, so we'll have zero point one eight. Y we have zero point four one six, and then fifty eight minus nineteen. 0.18, 0.416, 58 minus 19. Okay, so on solving it, the value will be 16.875, which will take it as 17 seconds. Okay, so. Now, if you observe, we have the green time. We have the green time for respective roads. We have the amber uh, uh, time. We'll take it as five seconds, right? So, if we find, want to find out the total cycle time, the total cycle time, so that will be G A plus A A G B. Plus A B. All right, so that will be twenty three plus five plus seventeen plus five. So the total cycle time will come out to be fifty seconds. Okay, so the the total cycle time will be fifty seconds. I should write here about the Total cycle time. The total cycle time will be equal to G A plus A A G B plus A B. Okay. <coughs> so like this, uh, basically, we uh, solve the Uh, the or we find out the traffic uh, traffic cycle time 
using the Webster's method. All right. So this is how it is done. Okay. Now uh, the last method that we have is the IRC method. Okay. Now in IRC method, nothing unique is there. In IRC method, what happens is it's a combination of approximation method and Webster's method. Okay. So I'll just cover here only. Okay, we have IRC method. That is the this is the fourth method. Right. So IRC method uh, is a combination of this method is a combination of approximation method combination of approximation method and webster's method okay it's a combination of approximation method and webster's method so basically what we do is we design the design the traffic signal we design traffic signal using approximation method okay and then what we do we check the validity we check the validity validity means the minimum green time minimum green time using webster's method minimum green time and the cycle time also okay Minimum green time and minimum cycle time using Webster's method. Okay, so simply put, first we solve it by approximation method, and next what we do is we solve it by Webster's method. All right, and then we see that the green time that we obtained from the approximation method and the green time that we obtained from the process method, uh, which is uh, giving us the higher value and same is which is giving us the uh, the higher uh, the overall traffic cycle time. Okay, so that's how the, uh, the combination of the method is called as the IRC method. Okay, for today, I will stop here. Okay, so that's it for today. So uh, again, go through all the methods, right? If you have any doubt, you can always ask. Okay, thank you.